this. We've got limited time. <laughs> so, you want to go further down the mine? You, so, so, you want to go further down the uh, tunnel? Wait, we went live. Yeah, you said you wanted to go live in four, <laughs> so we did. <laughs> You want to go further down, but first, the priority is find somewhere safe to camp and tend to your wounds and stuff. So, someone give me a survival roll to I find somewhere it. safe in the tunnels. I'm going to help. I'm, like, looking All right. around. Alright, give advantage. Uh, survival with advantage. A doxy. I have a plus three to survival. It's better than the plus nothing. Well, I have plus three as well, but... <laughs> you have the compass. Yeah, she has the compass. I think any. Uh, no, I think that's pop. Oh boy. Oh, and I did not roll good. Have you still got that inspiration from the fight? Yes. You do, actually. <laughs> I would have reminded you of that I was horrible. Uh, <laughs> I, I get to roll a D8, right? Extra D8. Shameless alcoholic. 16. 16. Yeah. All right, so... <laughs> when you start going down these caves, the water runs from that entrance in the middle of the Bullywog village uh, and starts to thin a bit. It seems that actually the Rokimoth didn't have a whole lot of room to explore. It's something that something that big couldn't keep going through when it thins into a bit more of a bit of a craggy cavern, but you guys can squeeze through and... Once you get past there, you find a little side area in the the, the watery caverns to uh, uh, make a little bit of a camp. It's not going to be the safest place. You're definitely going to want to keep watch. You can already can I mold earth to make it safer, like raise walls on either side. Of Absolutely, us? yes. You can start using mold earth to raise walls to basically make a little bit of a cont contained area around you. Yes, absolutely. I would do that. I would seal us off so that we can all get a good night's sleep. What does it look like when you use that power or does it just Um you can you can almost see the wind like moving like shoveling loose earth and then Indira packing it down with their hands physically. Imagine a machine gun that fires dirt. <laughs> no, now. It's also a little like that. No inside jokes, please. <laughs> awesome. So, that's even better. So you can essentially close up as much as possible so there's only one avenue someone has to look down. You know, can close yourself up completely because otherwise you'll suffocate. You're smart enough not to do that. Um, and you can start your little camp. You can uh, get the rations that you have on you and uh, prepare for um, uh, a series of watches. Is there anything you guys want to talk about or, and what is the watch pattern you're going to be doing? Elves don't sleep. Um. <laughs> you still need to rest, bitch. I would volunteer for a middle um, watch. Ian Dear wants to be in the middle. Would ask to not have to take a watch because she's very hurt. And needs to sleep. I'll okay. take the first. I shall take the first. Well, I shall take the four hours in uh, the early hours of the morning then. Okay. Cool. In which case, you start setting out your bedrolls, warming up some of the ration packs with a little bit of fire with you know, whatever you've got in your tinder box. Are there any gaps in our, in our earthen defenses? Yeah, because otherwise you'd suffocate, like I said. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you basically just sit whoever's at watch there, and they sit and watch the... Because there's from... It opens up into much more of what you'd imagine a natural cavern to look like. It's actually quite expansive and arcs downwards, but uh, also towards the south. Um, you looking down that way basically are watching towards the south because anything coming down that way would be you you'd hear because it has to scrabble through the little uh, tight areas um so hey Vale, why don't you give me a perception check Yay. other My than the occasional perception is 17 other than the occasional bat uh, and uh, cave insects and things. 
there's not a whole much you see. You do definitely notice that when you're here, when it comes to night, because you traveled at the beginning, beginning of the day, and now you're setting up a rest underground. Sure, you guys have an okay understanding of when the day-night cycle will be above ground, but also you aren't going to strictly adhere to it. When it gets to night, the roof of this cavern is coated in glow worms that sort of dangle down a little bit, or, or dangling trails of slime that start to glow from the glow worms. And it's, it's very pretty, actually. It's almost like stars in the sky. Oh. Um, but you probably don't want to touch it. But you all, you all successfully rest and have your, your sleep and patch up your wounds and eat what you need to eat. As long as you make sure that you've had rations on you and you tick them down. Yeah. Fully healed, yeah. Fully healed. Oh, thank goodness. And your hit dice return, you return half of your maximum hit dice. If you were missing any. Don't think we were this time. Don't think you were. Either. Cool. Well, yesterday was fun. Maybe we should not try to get eaten by a horrible frog monster today, though. Yeah, how did how did that come to be? Well, I moved the arm and it instantly tried to chase me and eat me. And funnily enough, it had large legs and uh, caught me. And, and then, then it ate me and I, I sort of, I don't really remember that bit so well. I just sort of remember up, down, and then there was warm and wet and it smelled very bad, yeah. Mm. And and it got a lot darker as well, yeah. Oof. Although it was an interesting experience, it's certainly not one that I would like to repeat. No, we should be careful proceeding down these tunnels. That creature must have come from somewhere, although I would hazard a guess based on the size of the tunnels, but it was probably the largest of its kind. Yeah, that's a good point. Now that I'm thinking about it, do I uh, do I know what that creature was or have any idea? You can give me nature or... It's really just a nature check for that. Yeah, I'm probably not going to, but... You know, Big yeah, frog. <laughs> Big frog. Big frog. Yeah. Big I mutant frog. <laughs> yeah. Big frog with tentacles, yeah. There's weird things in this world. That's yeah. one of them, you know? So you're going to start working your way down town? <clears throat> working, huh? So you're going to uh, work your way down the cavern? Uh, Indira would ask Gil, would say, would you like me to carry that for you? And without even waiting for him to answer, take the tongue and just like attach it to her axe and hold mm. it out in front so that he could see a lot better, so that we could see all around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because remember, your dark vision doesn't give you full vision. It doesn't let you to see the colors or the fine details. So that's actually a really good idea. And then hold it out to him to cast light on. Thank you. And I'll yeah. cast light. I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm gonna Don't lose it. I'm gonna light a candle. Because you want your own separate little light source. No, it's it's just uh, if you run into uh, it's his bed, like... yeah, and no one remembered. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Uh, no, we ha It's been a gone. He's turned hundred. It's a vigil uh, for the frog monster. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> if if you run into areas with low oxygen, the candle will go out before we die. Canary. And if you run into cave gas that isn't flammable, it will you'll, go out, yeah, or we, or it will That's explode. That's a great idea. Um. As you start working your way further down the caverns, other than, like I said, very simple oh, cavern. Actually, sorry, I did want to say one thing to Indira feel free, after. Feel free. Uh, I just be like, you seem to be getting in a lot of scrapes, which is good because the rest of us don't really like getting into scrapes. So please take this and I'll give her a healing potion. Thank you kindly. We don't like scrapes, but you do like grinds. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that will actually get a laugh from Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> and a, like, sideways smirk from Indira. <laughs> because you have the compass and a light source and you aren't in a particular rush, making your way through this cavern, I don't need to do any kind of rolls. You pass the occasional pool of water that's filled with uh, cave fish. You... Part. A lot of it seems to be water trickling, running down, you know? When you get to a certain point, 
after you know, an hour or so of walking. There's no more water at the bottom of the cavern. The cavern becomes a lot drier. But always is fairly open, seems mostly natural. Although, um, any people of the world who actually, I think none of you are, but just in general, you know, tunneling monsters often make these caverns almost by accident. It could be something like that, you know, mm. uh, that happened a long, long time ago. Or that frog emoth didn't seem to be the kind to tunnel. You, uh, as you start making your way much further down, feel heat rising from the caverns. Occasionally there's these almost potholes that have hot air venting up from them. Uh, sometimes it's almost like a burst, you know, like a burst of steam, like little geysers that are formed in some areas, but mostly it's just hot air venting from lower down in the caverns. But it's always traveling more or less southwards. It's a bit of a winding path and sometimes there are, you know, branches that you have to choose which way to go down, but this, uh, it is starting to get hotter. Did you keep going? So, what was it that Jack said about the dwarves? They dug and discovered something? I think so. I'm not quite sure. Did he I mean, honestly, what? dwarves just dig. Like, that's just what they do. So, there's probably a city down here somewhere. Or a village of some kind where they would mine and sleep and live. I suppose hmm. that is possible. Some of the mountain dwarves could have left the Crimson Mountain when the hill dwarves took favor, but that would have only been recently, so... Or it could be more in did not indigenous, perhaps, but they could have moved here many years ago. I mean, Jack admitted that his sense of time was slightly skewed, yes? They could have been here a very long time now, longer than, uh, longer than, our, than well, everyone perhaps except Vale's lifetimes. <laughs> Does all of our surroundings still look completely uh, naturally formed? You can give me in a nature or investigation check. Yeah, as far as you can tell, it seems okay. to be natural. Although you, you're probably because of just Dean reads uh, Dean reads stories. Dean reads stories. Gilwyn reads stories. You might think burrowing creatures, you know. Mm. But yeah, it seems seems natural. Okay. Does it seem hotter than dwarves would like? Um, that would be an insight roll, Indira. That she. Poses this question out loud. <laughs> okay, okay, can I give an insight roll yeah, then? Absolutely. <laughs> Considering you haven't got to where the heat is coming from, but even now it's starting to get uncomfortable, almost definitely it's mm -hmm. going to be beyond what a dwarf would find comfortable. And dwarves will go through a lot of discomfort without complaint as well. But you, you figure if you keep going down, it's going to get to something really hot. That okay. is probably um, not of dwarven... I mean, it could be some sort of dwarven machine, but it wouldn't be somewhere where dwarves would be. Yeah, I think we so. need to check a different path. Yeah, Knight, Knight, would, Knight would explain this. He'd say, the other alternative, I mean, we are underground. We could be coming across some sort of, I believe it's called lava. I have not ever encountered it myself, but... It would certainly be a powerful source of heat in these sort of areas. Yeah, definitely. I think it's called magma, actually. You know, uh, yeah, one of my scholars back in the, the city, they say it is magma when it's uh, underground like this. Oh, that's oh. very interesting. I was not aware of that. Thank you, Vale. You've enlightened me. Let's yeah, I thought it was interesting. Better than the theology studies, you know. <laughs> Well, you know, religion is each to one's own, whereas facts of the world are the facts of the world, as it were. So you think we should take another path? Yeah. Hmm. We can at least attempt to um, head in a different direction and see if it gets warmer or colder. Should we not follow this path down to the point? 
as far as we can handle the heat in an attempt to see what it might be. You never know, it may simply pass by a hot vent of air of something and then continue on the way we want to go. I'm not saying it's that likely, but seeing as we are here, it is worth checking out, no? I would say I, I would agree with Vale. We might as well continue until it becomes impassable. There is no we've there is no I don't believe we're in a particular rush. We can turn around once we have fully investigated. I'm okay with that. Obviously, as Indira says, there is no reason to put ourselves at any sort of risk, even of heat exhaustion. So when we decide we wish to turn around, we may as well. I wish to turn around now, but I'm not your queen. If all three of you want to keep going, let's keep going. I just want to be able to look back at this moment and say, I told you so. <laughs> okay. Mike um, draws a card and looks at it and sort of I I would say yes, we should continue going at least for the time being, but um your insight is is certainly appreciated there. Alrighty. You so you start making your way further down. And it does get hotter. It never gets unbearably hot. It never gets to the kind of thing that you can't handle. Maybe you loosen your armor a little. Maybe Gilwyn shows a little more chest hair. But it never gets... It never gets unbearable. It never gets into something that you, you cannot handle as you keep making your way down, but not as far down. You seem to have gotten to the base the lowest point of the cavern, at least in the, the, the local area, and mostly you're just going across. Mm. When you get to a, um open passage, uh, where it opens up, you actually see exactly what o uh, Knight was talking about. Magma. Or lava. Whichever one is appropriate for the situation that we're in. Little cracks and crevices that bubble forth into mostly the more blackened and colder uh, magma. But beyond that, you see little creatures in it. Little, small, almost imp-like things fluttering around the magma uh, and sitting on top of the rocks in this area. Do they speak common? You don't know. <laughs> um, well, this is, certainly, this is certainly a sight. Do you think they can communicate? Should we... Do you want me to go and try? I feel like Vale's encountered other versions of these. You've encountered the mini, the earth ones, the mini earth ones when we were going up. Oh no, that you want, would you have been with us when we went up the mountain and encountered the mini earth sprite things? Mm. Geodudes. Uh, yeah, basically geodudes. Yeah, no, he wasn't. These aren't. He did see those. them on the way back. Oh, uh, okay. He's thinking, I, I, well, I am thinking. PC-wise, methods, but I'm not sure. Neil has encountered them. I don't think Vale has encountered yeah. them. Yeah. It's difficult to remember sometimes. Mm-hmm. Everything blurs together. <laughs> um, I mean, how big are they, Ollie? Around three feet tall, if they were to stand up straight. They have very elongated, sharp features and look as if they are made of stone and magma themselves. You know, mm. their, their head almost is like this long, sharp point from the top to a long nose. Their wings are long and gangly and their limbs are all spiky and dangly as well. I mean, is this is this like a cavern that we can pass through or is this where the tunnels end? No, it, it keeps going. It keeps going past it. Uh, and could we traverse by without having to go too near to, to the magma? They are... Without having to go too near to the magma, yes, you can kind of go around. But uh -huh. they would definitely see you. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things you could probably sneak by if you were all very stealthy, stuff like that. Yeah, but you can okay. avoid the, the raw heat of the magma, although... Um, in this amount, it probably won't be too damaging just to stand near it, but definitely damaging if you fell in it, you know. What language do you think they speak? I only know Elvish and Common, so... If they speak at all. If they speak at all, yes. They appear to be chattering to each other, but then some creatures just make noise, you know. 
And none of us can understand it. Well, what languages do you speak? Elvish. I did not know them. <gasps> I'll, uh, I'll look at a uh, knight and be like, normally I'm okay with just talking to anybody, but I have a rule. And the pointier somebody is, the more scary they seem, usually. That is They're quite true. pointy. Mm. They are pointier than me. To... That is certainly a valid rule to live your life by. Um, we could attempt to sneak past them. I mean, it's we we have a reasonably quiet party as long as um, we give Indira some help with that. My... I can slide right by undetected, no problem. Depending on how big this cavern is, actually. How big is the cavern? Oh, bigger than 30 feet. It's around <laughs> 80 feet to the other mouth of the cavern, uh, the furthest way. No, that's my, straight throw. My only question, or rather objection to this, is we only came down here due to curiosity. I don't think we should risk anything just by feather peeking it. I... I Maybe. agree, but uh, that may have been what the knight wanted to come down here for. I still am holding out hope that these will connect to the dwarven caverns and be a safer way to get into where we need to go. I'm going to be honest. This looks like a defense setup to me. It looks to me like this cavern goes by this magma on purpose. Hmm. Okay. In which case we can expect these things to be either summoned by the presence of magma or here with intent and hostile. Yeah. Hmm. Currently, the two you can easily see are kind of like playing in the magma and splashing it at each other. Now, forgive me if I'm wrong, Vale, since you seem to be the leading expert on magma and lava. Isn't that, supposed, isn't that stuff supposed to be ridiculously hot? That's why we can feel it from over here, I presume. I don't think... I don't think normal things would be able to play in that. So, uh, we sneak by? I think we sneak by. <laughs> Agreed. Unless anyone wants to go and play in the magma with them. <laughs> it's not on the top of the list of activities I wish to do today, no. Not with all that fare. No, quite. I, I think only parts reasoning. of me would survive. Uh, there's a couple of stories about that, so I do not want to repeat them, to be quite frank. But not the best parts, Indira. Smile, and then I'll start sneaking off. Uh, her, no, her I quite like her eyes, actually, and I, I, I wonder whether <laughs> rubies would survive, you know? <laughs> says Gil as they big this is Vale. So Gil. you bless the trickster in Dira, which means everyone give me a stealth roll. I mm, shall I shall I use an enhance ability on this? Um Well Vale's already rolled, it's <laughs> fine, I won't bother. Well you all suck, don't you? And now here comes my nap one. We don't suck, we're entirely average. Hey yeah, it's true. But you're also level five. <laughs> Nothing wrong okay. with being average, well, is there, Dean? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I roll with advantage, yeah? No, you roll with flat, because your armor usually gives you disadvantage. I missed okay. the average. <laughs> is that why you're actually a half giant? <laughs> she got better than us. You all suck. So you guys start stealthing your way through this cavern, but it's hot. And the, the hot air, the closer you get to the magma pools we almost have to like you can feel it as a thickness in the air that you have to make your way past now tonight actually being a resident of a tropical island he's actually a lot e easier able to deal with this kind of originally air. coming from a desert land exactly this actually doesn't <laughs> trouble him at all and he ends up sneaking ahead of all of you going a slightly different path crawling over some rocks using his claws in some of the walls. The other three of you are much more close together and have to move quite slowly, even slower than you usually do. Although Vale's definitely one of those people who like crouch sneaks, uh, sprint sneaks sometimes. But they see you. 
It's very obvious. It's when you get around halfway through, you kind of all bump into each other because Vale locks eyes with one of them. That is kind of just the one that's perched on top of a spiky rock in the middle. And just kind of like... Staring at him, just dead stare. The others don't seem to be incredible, like of the the little magma creatures don't seem to incredibly care. Um, but you you hear it mutter something in this very deep and gravelly voice that seems to get some of their attention, but they don't like go out and attack you. Although when Vale then starts to move again, its wings spread out to make it look bigger. Yeah. Uh, Indira. At this point, we'll uh, take the slappy hand tongue thingy <laughs> and <laughs> and take it off of her axe and point the axe very threateningly at hey, it. Give me an intimidate. It is the equivalent of two birds. Just the run. <laughs> run. <laughs> yeah, you do that, and it's like wings shook back in, and it actually seems to say something. Uh, quite sharply, and they all like duck their heads under the magma, and it actually will like swoop up and dive down into the pool as well. They all hide from you. Good going, <laughs> Indira. Yes. You're Thanks. scary to every small creature. This is really quite impressive. It, 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 it tends you... to work on larger creatures sometimes too. Yeah, With that, I, you can I'm keep sure going. you know. <laughs> Large creature, small mind. <laughs> <laughs> With nothing but the bubbling of the magma behind you and maybe some more chattering on, in whatever language they speak, you can keep going. And when you keep going, you see no more magma. It actually starts to go... Uh, uh, get a little bit moister again in the caverns as you start to be go going up a little bit more. Can everyone give me a... Hmm. Yes. A C. No, uh, I don't know what I want you to give me. I have an C. idea. Thank you, Neil. You win Why? the good boy award. Yeah. I said it too. God damn it. Did you do, <laughs> do it? Did you do the C as well? I did it with my penis. Oh, you win the long boy <laughs> award. <laughs> <laughs> it was only a small C. Can everyone give me survival <laughs> rolls, case. please? There's no case. Survival rolls. Survival. Survival. <laughs> this is supposed to be like what Indira's good at. Oh my god, I am not Bear grills, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, this makes me very happy. You're making your way up, and another sort of hour of time passes because you've got a lot of distance to travel. This cavern just seems to keep on going, and again, aside from simple wildlife, and even then, not much. You know, like... Occasionally you check down a corner and you, a bat will fly at you and Gilwyn will fall over and it'll be very funny. Um, there's not much. Um, Gilwyn, you seem to feel almost a tension in the air that you can't quite exactly place. That seems very familiar. You just, you just feel something in the air as you get closer and closer and closer. And a slight difference in the, the type of air as well that... Uh, it's also interesting, but you can't exactly place. It's when you're, you know, taking about to take one of those many little snack breaks or just, all right, we've got to rest our legs in one of the uh, parts of the cavern. Vale leans back against one of the walls, like, oh, my feet, and like takes off his boot and leans back on the walls, right up against a button. Uh. And you, while you're in this little narrow part of cavern, two hidden doors go... <laughs> separating all four of you inside this chamber. The doors are very obviously dwarven. They have almost a dwarven face on them in that very um, sharp line work sort of style of sculpting they do. The doors are pretty much prison doors. You know, they have this big face on them as well as bars that are very intricately detailed. Um, really, you know, an inch, inch and a half gap between each of the bars. Trapping you in. Indira will take her axe and kind of test the ground underneath the door. Uh, it's See if it stone, shifts. but you can mold earth stone. It's not just dirt. Okay, she just goes like this with her hand, just like starts lowering it, and a little divot goes underneath. You absolutely you can. can. You can just 
mold earth with your magic, dig a hole under the door that you can start squirming and climbing your ways through. Well, I believe we found the um, draw on construction, if not any dwarves. Yeah. All right, all right. You can look back at that moment and tell me that you told someone. You know, oh, I, I would never do such a thing. I considered it, but considering what you have just done, I am not going to say it. <laughs> you, you do realize how screwed we would be if we hadn't brought these people. If we hadn't met some, I mean, we, we'd, we'd be in that frog's stomach. Well, I mean, I guess you could argue that we wouldn't even be in the frog's stomach because we wouldn't have Endera's ship. That is true, yes. Uh, but you would be in a lot less debt. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Yeah, these two are... These two are good. We will have to get them a drink or two when we get back to civilization. Definitely. And I'll walk to Indira and witness her, like, pushing the the stone down and just be like, hey, take that several generations of dwarven construction. <laughs> <laughs> After so you. Onwards and uh, under? Yeah, she skitters through. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things where, because you lower sort of a five foot cube, you have to you know, squirm and work your ways under each one of you, but it's not the kind of thing anyone has to roll for, especially because you can like, you know, help each other out on the other side, stuff like that. It's easy peasy. And it appears to be mostly natural cavern on the other side as well, although you're of course gonna start moving much more carefully. Uh, wouldn't you guys do me a favor and just talk amongst yourselves for a minute? Thanks. <laughs> so, do you guys think dwarves are still here? It seems strange to me that we triggered one of their traps and they didn't what? come. You triggered one of their traps. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. How? There was You're... a button where you leant against, Vale. No, um, Gil stood on a pressure plate before I it's pushed that. It's neither I mean, here nor there. I mean, in the first place, I would debate whether or not that's necessarily a trap. It seems a bit of a pointless trap if you have to press a specific place on a wall that you wouldn't normally touch. So I, I, I... Uh, it is uh, perhaps a bit convoluted. Maybe they... It is normally dark in here. People would feel along the wall. It could get pressed. It could have been a, pe a pressure plate. What matters now is that we do need to think about if maybe some dwarves stayed behind. I mean, to answer your question, I believe um, Patrick Jack said that they, that most of them left, They, if I remember correctly, that they left because of some some danger or something. Yes, uh, you, <clears throat> you say danger, that uh, is probably a bad thing if a lot of dwarves ran from it. Uh, yes, yeah. but it, it's, I would imagine that, uh, I would imagine, based on what he said, that there might still be some dwarves here, at least if they've got the, the arms of the statue. But... Does anyone speak dwarven? I know, uh, like, six words. Forak taught us a couple, yes. I do not know any. I'm afraid I never had reason to learn it. It's, uh, it's really quite an interesting language. It's, it's you know, it's, uh... <laughs> it's basic, you know? <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah. it's pragmatic as well. Yes, based on based on what um, dwarves I've met, that seems very in line with them. Um, but yes, there aren't many dwarves on Tron. I never much had a chance to speak with them. How did you end up on Tron? Oh well, very simple story. I mean, I mean, <laughs> again, you know what they say about cats and curiosity. We are that, but by my people by nature are very. Um, we seek out adventure, we seek out new experiences, and I joined a, um, a merchant caravan. I wound up with a guild of thieves in Tron. It's not a particularly interesting story, to be quite frank, but my skills were useful, they appreciated me, so I stayed. You meet a lot of interesting people in Tron, and there's always something different going on. It's a very colourful place. I'm, I'm sure you're aware you spent a, quite a while there, I believe. But there isn't any particularly deep story to my arrival in Tron. It's only after I got to Tron that my story really began, I suppose you could say. It's when you're uh, a little bit after that, that you <laughs> notice... After, when, when he eventually stops monologuing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you notice a difference in the ground. When the cavern opens up slightly more and you uh, feel uh, a little bit of wood under your feet. 
and you come to notice that you've gone into a little bit of a dwarven strip mine where they've been kind of mining down corridors. It seems like this was natural cavern. They've just almost mined into it a little bit. But you become very much aware that you are in the mine proper. Yeah, very no, tight is... little corridors. A little bit of wood on the ground. Sand, dirt. Are there signs of recent use? Mm, that would be a... Ooh. Nurse, survival, nature, insight. I'll, I'll take lend the assist. <laughs> oh, well, I'm getting... Am I get, okay. Well, yeah, I'm getting, I'm if I'm getting an assist, I'm rerolling yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually. Um, based on where tools and things, it looks like people left in quite a hurry. Um, or at least dwarves did. But then you kind of listen, you pay attention, and it looks like you do see footprints. You actually see burnt footprints in the sand in particular. So like glass footprints? Kind of, a little yeah, tiny bit. Like it's sparkly. Yeah. <laughs> like it's glitter. Yeah, when you use the, the light over it, you can see it. Well, it seems what Jack said about the dwarves leaving is true, but there do appear to be signs of habitation. I would imagine creatures similar to those fire magma things that we saw earlier, based on damage done to the ground. Perhaps, are, are these, are these um, footprints Footspits, marks, Footprints are pretty small, yeah. So they're similar to those previous ones. It could just be that those creatures are inquisitive by nature and have explored the caverns, but... Yeah. I'm not too scared of those creatures, to be honest, but keep a lookout. So, uh, I, I'm just going to say straight up right now, uh, you know, I really get the feeling that these little blighters work for a big boy, and uh, he's going to be somewhere in here, and that is what drove the dwarves away. Um, so, uh, if you have any spells to protect us all from horrifying burns all over our body, uh, we should prepare them. Uh, if not, we should prepare ourselves for uh, third degree burns. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't really have anything to protect against that, but I can at least bolster us to a degree. Um, he goes round, they say Carl each of um, on you three. He doesn't include himself on the, in this. Mm -hmm. right. 10 HP. Huh. Ain't that something? That is some thirty extra HP. Yeah, well, that's pretty high. That's uh, that will certainly be useful. I uh, feel better already. Who knew your playing card could do such a thing? Hmm? <laughs> so, do we want to um, continue quietly? Wait, thirty extra HP? No, no. I want level Yeah, yeah, thirty in total. Okay. Okay. Want... Still dope. Do we wish to continue quietly? Uh, Absolutely. Do you, I would. do you want one of us? Should one of us sneak ahead, it, travel ahead? I, I think, think that splitting up is a bad idea in case of ambushes. But what about clues? It, um, <laughs> not to put too fine a point on this, and while well, I agree, at the same time, um, the party moving quietly together does not has not really worked out a couple of times we've tried it whereas a single person moving on their own it's a lot easier to stay hidden right then we'll wait here and have a look around certainly um, in that forward. case i will see you in a moment and he as he says this he pulls out a card just places it against himself and boop, nice. vanishes <laughs> And then is I'm going to sneak ahead to um, look around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that right. That looks really useful. Gil, why can't you do that? All right. Well, I can <laughs> sing better than he can. I can do that. You can do that. Even Indira can do that. You can do. Are you sure you can do that? Though. She doesn't know that he's not misty stepping. By the way. <laughs> yeah, she. To, to everyone else, just disappears. All right. Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right, um, and then and then Indira is gonna just start taking a look around the cavern. By the way, yeah, yeah. Feel free to give me an investigation check, but uh, right now let's just have uh, night start to okay. wander when you find yourself. 
I'm trying right. to find where I am on the Zoom on the out. Floor. Ah, Zoom there, out. Oh, yes, I found myself. There we go. Ollie, can you give me? Oh yes, you'll have feet. light on you, won't you? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, kind yeah. of can't, like, see... I, I don't think I've got... Da you don't have dark vision. For some reason, I thought that Knight didn't have dark vision. Ah, that would. Yeah. So, let me do that, and then don't move. Sure. Just need to update your token. Hands <laughs> off, Dean. Hands <laughs> off. Don't touch the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wish that was the first time I heard that. <laughs> Uh, and now I'll give uh, Guild Light, which I think is forty twenty, right? I question the circumstances a little bit. I went to pets at home. <laughs> All right, now feel free to move, uh, but Knight is the one doing that. Um, so just for reference, did we come in? Am I you going... came in where Vale is. Okay, so we. Uh, going... There is a little bit of detritus on the ground to show that a bit. Um, we could also mark it with a little bit of symbolage if you wanted, because there would be tunnel down here it's just not built yeah. that way because okay that's quite a distance <laughs> <laughs> mm. if you guys want to mark that this is where you came in feel free because i can't do that now because i've got that's to follow fair, i've got to follow knight around with the camera <laughs> but this is where where i am yeah i most definitely see things so what that. you see up there knight actually has a little bit of light to it um, is a small, similar to the creature you saw before, uh, in, in the lava, but it's not made of lava, and it's much chunkier, and it seems to be made of petrified and burnt wood with light glowing from inside it. Ah! Uh, um, let's see what's <laughs> nah. uh, Also... Uh, far, far behind it, you seem to see creatures much more similar to the magma creatures, but they were kind of clinging to the walls and the dust and sand, because the ground here is carved out by the dwarves, but clearly not to a fine degree, so there's still sand and dust and stuff like that. There's another one over here. Are those scorpion things I see in the top Those right? are very big scorpions. Oh, lovely. <laughs> seem to just sort of be scuttling around, eating something, perhaps. This is going to be a brutally grueling fight. This is not going to be a pleasant fight. I've seen half a dozen creatures already. Oh my god. Um, I've got Ollie's little face busted. He's like, you're fucked. Oh, 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 you're going into a big old dungeon, huh? Prepare Riddle the whole again, initiative those... on your assholes, huh? <laughs> those rebels go well with you. Oh, also. that's big. Hmm? That was big. <laughs> Uh, do those ripples go well with your whiskey? I've had my whiskey already, yeah. You know what? Jesus this also Christ. should have light up, uh, uh, to it. That's a big boy over there. I am that not is a big, big boy. I am not attempting to sneak past here. that. <laughs> I am going back down here. Um, on the assumption this will probably take me back to where the rest of the party is. Well, hey. Assumption correct. Okay, so, um, Knight, you, Indira probably feels something brush past her. Knight isn't Ooh. coming out of invisibility. He just pro he just goes up to, um, Bale and Gil, hand on each, hand on the shoulder of each of them. Just says, uh. um, I recommend we remain rather quiet. There's a rather a lot of creatures in there. They seem to be <laughs> similar to those things we saw earlier, except there is at least one absolutely huge one. There's also some scorpions. It's all a bit... If they are aggressive, then this could be nasty. Right. Says Vale, sheathing his dagger. <laughs> <laughs> I just pictured Knight being like, um, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to tell you, chaps. <laughs> so... Right. Okay. Um, is it worth me attempting to shoot a few before they know where we are firing from? I mean, they were rather spread out. I believe if we can kill them quickly enough, we could divide and conquer effectively, take them as they um, attack us. But we would need to be careful to do that. Mm -hmm. I was going to take his bow off his back. And... Could maybe draw them out groups at a time? That is also a possibility. Um, Ollie, by the way, did I see any anything that looked like exit for exit or further 
so like if if there. you're because you can see where you've already walked because of the advanced map mode it seems that there's a bit except of a like critical can't. mind path huh except i can't can't you i can no. and i can see what you can see <laughs> so i think you've got something set up wrong there lad that's entirely possible um <laughs> There seems to be a bit of a critical path through of much more smoothed ground. Um, but you didn't go to either of its ends. Okay. Um, that was... So, was that... Basically the path you walked. The path I walked, okay. Um, yeah. I think I'm the fastest here on foot. Um... I could run in, you could position yourself on either side of this path here, and we could lead them into an ambush. Hmm. Um, Worth a try, but it would be dangerous for you. I'm not scared. The other problem is that they are all spread out from a central point, if you can imagine, that it would be difficult to lure one specifically. Then, yeah, but they will be nice and bottled necked by this path here. This path specifically, yes, but then I wonder what worry about our ability to fight them. We can't gang up on them very easily in such a small path. Sure we can. Um, if, if you follow me. Well, I suppose most of us can attack from a distance, so perhaps it isn't impossible. But, but be very careful, don't go too far forward, India. You will come into view of them quite quickly. Sure. Um, uh, night, night moves past, and you can just see him. Like he, he basically is going to draw like arrows him. in the dirt at mm. it, uh, just point where the creatures were. So that's a great that, idea. So that people can tell without. <laughs> there's people. a lot of arrows. <laughs> yeah, there's so, a lot of arrows. Exactly. <laughs> if one of you stands where I'm standing now, somebody takes a position here, and somebody takes a position to my right then you will all be able to attack as I run through. And I will end up here fighting. Hmm. Yes. So, um, uh, it's a good we, bottleneck. Where are we attempting to channel the enemies into? Uh, you north play, of Vale. Oh, I thought it was right here is where they were coming from. Well, they, no, they're coming. They are coming from up here. Um, is, is that even doing anything? There. No. Come on, work. <laughs> They're coming from up there. Oh god, I see something moving. I see so night night immediately just goes shh, 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 shh. Roll initiative, Flash! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I see something coming. <laughs> this, this is, is why this is I love happens. dungeons <laughs> with fucking dynamic that, lighting. Especially that. an enemy that casts light. <laughs> that last little transcript there. Oh, work, damn it. I can see something coming. <laughs> <laughs> so this this is what always the happens gang when I go the glory exploring. Hole. Do you remember on the, on the Monday game where I was exploring with my familiar and just suddenly so I'm like exploring chill, chilled out and then suddenly, oh my god, what's that? <laughs> Ian <laughs> always is the one exploring the dungeon first. We are missing a Gilwyn Gallagher initiative role. I did click myself. You did not touch yourself well enough. I'll I'll touch you for you. Thank you. Uh, in this situation, in this one only, um, the little thing, as hey. now it comes into view, creature made of petrified and burnt wood, face a, a mask, kind of skull-like, but very elongated and twisted. Uh, all the, the way the wood has burnt is held in place. And it turns and you see the lightning crackle and burn more inside it, and it just charges. And runs straight into and the runs night. into night <laughs> because night is invisible <laughs> and you just kind of swat at the air. What's your AC? Eighteen. It does hit you as its hands are crackling with electricity. It just and just it's one of the things. There's like almost an aura to its attacks that almost inevitable for you to get hit. It deals six lightning damage, and your clothing starts to be coated in this electricity that stays arcing and clinging to you. Oh, are you giving are you giving Knight an opportunity to cast off? 
<laughs> He's invisible, I mean. <laughs> and I'll also add, creature was definitely screeling as it roared forwards. Mm -hmm. Veil. Oh god, when you see light coming around the corner. <laughs> um, Veil's gonna take a step back. Whoa! Steps onto some pressure plate. Sorry. <laughs> I scared the crap. I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, could, I thought it was in real 20. Um, Veil's gonna take a step back. Raise the long bow. Sorry. Night, you might want to duck. <laughs> I like how he has no idea. He has no dark. idea where night is, but just <laughs> presumes that night will get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, that's a hit. You shoot this creature in the chest, and it looks down. The lightning seems to grow stronger and stronger, and it explodes. The wood shattering out around it. Uh, night and Gilwyn, give me a... Wait. Let me. These those are the same little shits as were in um were in Here Be Heroes. Sound that. familiar, don't they? Knight yeah. Gilwin and Indira, please give me dexterity saves. Indira, you have advantage because when you can see I a sure thing, do. you may have advantage. Hmm. And it doesn't oh matter. My God. Oh, that's just sad. <laughs> that's brutal. <laughs> Indira, you take eight. Uh, lightning damage, the other two of you take four. And it four. shatters apart Why into little wooden splinters. I have any kind of resistance to lightning due to my storm aura. I've been looking, but also. Oh, I, had a hard time. I don't think so. I, I think you get that later. Higher level. Let me I think you get that later. Guys. Okay. Next up is Gilwyn. Well, <laughs> sorry, mm. guys. <laughs> huh. Okay. At this point, you can hear skittering there, and chattering, echoing in the deep caverns and dark. Yeah, you don't you don't get resistance until um sixth level. Okay. Mm. From the direction that one just came. Other direction. You I, can hear I, the noise Vail, from Vail all Vail over. Vale has seen one from the other. Vale Vail points down uh, where Indira is. There's a oh. light coming from that direction. Huh, okay. Over mm. here? Over here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ping, ping, ping. Oof. Put it here. I will um, inspire Indira and just say, uh, watch yourself, I think one's coming. Mm. On it. Night. Your clothes are crackling with electricity. Is this an action to disrobe? Yes. In this case, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> the other question is, I've always, I have, I've always explicitly um, put Worn in nice your hat. clothes on top of the yeah. The clothes on top of yeah. the armor, so I can disrobe without losing my armor. Yeah. Okay. Clothes coming off. I, I don't. I imagine it's for, it's you just see reappear. you guys just see what? his jacket just appear yeah. and fall yeah. on the ground. Yeah, and then um, and, and then once all the once all the clothes have gone to the ground, like the hat appears on the top of the pile, and um, <laughs> the, then a card appears out of nowhere and goes towards Vale, and um, Knight Knight just says, um, "Keep that path." Clear. I am going to hide behind them and attempt to flank them. I'm giving Vale um, inspiration. Inspiration. So one, two. Bardic. Inspiration. Four, five. You just. Yeah. Inspire. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you gotta. <laughs> going to stay here and see what comes. Ooh. Indira, the storm. All right. Um, I am going to run this way. 10, 15, 20, 25. So brave, Gil. Splitting the party. 
This is no, she's easy. gonna. She's definitely gonna wait. Right. You can it wait. You can the, also. Makes, so there's many sense. things you could do. You could prepare an action. You could take the dodge action, which gives enemies disadvantage against attacking you. Um. I uh, yeah. I want. So you can either pre like for when they come into range, you could prepare your two attacks that you would take. That's that's what I'm thinking. I'm trying. You can to only decide. prepare one attack from extra attack, but yes. Oh, I can't yeah. use my I extra attack. Like no, because it's you because you're not taking an attack. You're taking an attack action outside of your turn if you prepare. But it you are still taking the attack action. Yes, but you're taking the prepare. No, that's action that's why you like. Or re on like an opportunity attack, you use your reaction. Therefore, you only get one. Yeah, but you are it's the same logic. It's exactly action. that same logic. Yeah, because but you're, you're essentially still using your attack action. No, you're taking the I'm preparing action instead. But that doesn't exist. But it it do it, it does in rules. <laughs> That's just how it works. Because it's it's very specific how it works. So you can't get extra attacks. You have to say if I see a creature get up to me, I attack instead of other ones. Or it's like I'm just gonna take Overwatch outside of my turn or something like that. So you don't get extra. I'm gonna prepare my one attack. Cool. Alrighty. Things are still gonna start moving. It's great having night be invisible right there, seeing all the things move around. Oh yeah, you're right. You you so when you when you're trigger, you take the ready action and then you use your reaction. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Six. Indira, this tight dwarven mining shaft, this little gremlin crackling with electricity just runs. Its feet burning, smoky holes in the ground, and then it leaps at you. You get an attack, it gets an attack. Alright. It doesn't hit. You might. <laughs> You absolutely hit. Hell yeah. Hell no! <laughs> yeah, no. Yep, you, it jumps at you and you're just like, and knock it back. <laughs> and it tumbles back, making a wooden noise on the ground before getting back up. Would I be able to rage to... Uh, you, you know what, I'll just wait for my next rage turn. Anyway. turn. Yeah. Yeah. Veil. <gasps> <laughs> he was uh, inspiring. <laughs> I make myself laugh. That's all that matters. 14. Exactly. <laughs> wow! I do not have to back. What a monster! What a what a monster! <laughs> the horrific <laughs> time when I don't have sneak attack. Eh? Oh stifled. no, you don't have a sneak okay. attack. Yeah, and you then... see this um, creature, seemingly made of dust and sand, very similar to the ones you saw in the magma, uh, with the sharp features, dragging itself, flying along, looking to where this is, and then just an arrow, it takes it and it sort of flutters, and then breaks it out of itself, because it kind of is made of sand. It doesn't go down. Okay, uh, then I will take... One, two, three, steps forward. Um, and because of dual wield master, I will then swing. Uh, yeah. Swing. Though it's swing. Yes, because you have your parrying dagger in your yeah. wrist slot. Awesome. He does a flourish for, Gil the, for Gil's. Oh, um, it's like when Loki takes out it's his like, swords in uh, yeah, Ragnarok. He gives it gives him a look. <laughs> Um, I will actually go and down her. Actually, since I can do that, we'll do that. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah, that's fine. And I will. Mm, what will I do? What is this creature again? It's almost like a. Similar in size to a goblin made of petrified wood with electricity crackling from inside it. Okay. Um, I will cast Dissonant Whispers at it. Been a while. It has been a while. 
Um, the discordant melody is it's the sound of fire. Wisdom oh. save. It goes to sleep. It's so calm and relaxed it by the fails. crackle of this wooden fireplace. <laughs> it fails. It takes psychic damage. Ooh. You do this, you run up and you cast a spell and it's like on the ground after being knocked back from Indira. It starts to back away and fall apart into nothingness. Nice. And then a little spark of electricity inside <coughs> it. Outwards, you two give me a deck save. Oh, poopy. Do I get advantage on this one you with do, Danger yeah. Sense? Yeah, yeah. Are you shitting me? Oh. I mean, oh my god. <laughs> You've replaced Ian. Yeah, Ian used to be the unluckiest one here. Yeah. Doxy, you had your this one is, good roll. Every single campaign, I'm the unlucky that one. Is, that is. Unlucky. Uh, you take eight lightning damage, Gil, and you take four. You know, Ian lost his luck because I, I forcibly took it from him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's got it back. Yeah, I, I have regained it a bit since we started using Roll Twenty for. But Roll. it's it's like Goku when he goes Super Saiyan God. I've still I've still remembered it. All right, Knight, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going into that. Not right now. Not today. So what you know what? It's not like... your turn, Knight, because we're going to take a real quick break. Okay. We're going to come back to this. <laughs> 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 